All right, what is up you guys? My name is Giovanni and I know you can't see my face right now and that's because I am sitting on my garage floor with this cylinder head. Today I'm gonna to be showing you guys how you could do a valve job on your vehicle with no special tools required. In this instance, this is a 2.4 liter Ecotec head. And if you guys did see my last two videos, you'll see that I absolutely demolished the valves on this trying to do the timing on this engine. Unfortunately, all the intake valves were lost on this engine. They're all bent. Fortunately, the exhaust valves were okay. So I'm only gonna be doing the intake portion of this head. However, the process is the same if you're gonna be doing all the valves. So in order to better understand what we're actually doing today, I've removed a valve out of my old cylinder head already. So as you may know, the valve sits up inside the cylinder head and it is opened and closed by a spring that sits above it. And the most important thing to get out of all this is that this is the top of the valve stem. And you can see that there's these little grooves in there. These grooves are actually keep a pair of retainers wrapped around it and they're sealed by the spring. So just a quick little example for you guys. Here's my valve stem. The spring goes on top of it. This little thing sits there. The whole thing kind of sits like this. And then on the actual little grooves, you have two little keepers that just kind of sit there like that. And once the valve spring goes up, it locks into those retainers. And even with only one on there, you could see that I cannot pull the spring off. So that same philosophy pretty much applies to most valve springs, even V8 engines such as the LS. They all have similar retainers and keepers on the springs themselves. And today I'm gonna to be showing you guys a couple different methods on how you can remove these springs. One of them, which requires no special tools, just a couple basic hand tools that you probably already have. And then I'll just show you guys a couple examples of some tools that you may need if it's a very particular head or you cannot do it with the tools I'm suggesting. So the first thing I need to do is I need to take out the camshafts because they are actually in the way of the valve springs. So I'm just gonna take off all the cams. And in my particular case, all my cam caps are actually marked with their proper orientation and which way they're supposed to point. If yours aren't, you may just want to put them back in order the way you found them. Just lay them off to the side on a piece of cardboard or something so that way you don't get confused because these actually do have the cam bearing on them. You don't generally want to get these mixed up. So on this engine, this high pressure fuel pump housing does kind of stay on there. Sometimes if you lift up the cam, you can see that it starts moving. Sometimes you just wiggle the cam up and down gently, and that's usually enough to break it off. All right, so this is our intake cam. I'm going to be taking this one off and moving it to the side. The next thing we wanna do is I wanna get all my little rocker arms. Same thing, I'm just gonna put them in the same orientation that I found them, so that way I don't get them mixed up. So now that the intake cam is removed, I'm gonna get started on removing these intake valves. And real briefly, I'm gonna to talk to you guys about some of the options you have to remove these. And the way we want to remove them is we're basically going to apply pressure on the spring itself. These little keepers will find their way out. There are a couple tools designed specifically for this. This tool is the Lyle 36050 kit. It comes with two different valve retainer tools. And basically the way these work is that there is this little spring loaded pin here and there is a magnet embedded inside the tool itself. It's a real simple concept. All you're going to do is get this guy. Stop! So being that I'm not always the smartest person, I haven't used this Lyle tool in a while, and I just remembered that I don't actually remove the springs the way I was doing it. I forgot that these come apart, and basically you have this, which is same concept as our socket. However, there is a magnet in here, which does make it easier because it tries to pull the keepers out as you're pushing down. I actually do recommend this Lyle tool. It does make life a lot easier. If you know you're gonna be doing this job, it's a good tool to have. However, it is about 40, $50. If you're working on a push rod style V8, this tool in particular is for a small block Chevy. These are very cheap. This one was like $10. And basically it would just mount on your rocker stud and you would just run a bolt down on it and it would compress the valve and then you just go in there with the magnet, get the keepers out. These are very effective tools, very cheap, really easy to use. So in addition to that, they have other tools. They have specific tools for the head you're working on. Usually these tools, unfortunately, are very expensive. And if you're only gonna be doing this job once, it doesn't make a lot of sense to purchase those tools. Here's what we're gonna be using today. If you can't tell, this is just a 3 a socket with a 3 a extension on it. This particular one is an 11 16 impact socket. These things are very cheap. You probably have a few of them in your drawer. If you're doing a job like this, chances are you already own a socket set. And pretty much we're just gonna be applying the same concept as those Lyle tools, except without the fancy magnet and the uh, retracting pin. 
So I just have here a regular old rusty sledgehammer. I'm gonna be doing these ones since you guys could probably see these the best. I'm just gonna get my socket, line it up on top of the valve. I'm going to hold the socket center. I'm gonna give it a little, a couple taps there just to loosen up the keepers. And I'm just gonna give it one good pound down. Sometimes it takes more than one. It's also a good idea to wear a glove on the hand that you're holding the socket with just so you don't cut yourself because cylinder heads are usually very sharp. Give it a nice bang. That one didn't work either. It does take a few attempts, but once you get it, you'll know it. There we go. So as you can see, it took a couple attempts. You kind of have to hit it just right on. But as you can see, my spring came off and my little valve keepers are in there. I just usually grab a magnetic tip magnet and I'm able to just extract them. This is a brand new cylinder head, so obviously the keepers might be on a little bit tighter than a used head. Yours will probably be a lot easier if you have a couple thousand miles on. I know my old head was a lot easier to do. So then I'm just gonna simply repeat the process with all the valves. I'm just gonna put my socket on the valve again, line it up as best as I can, give it a couple of little taps just to shake them loose. That one didn't work. There we go. So on this particular one, you can see that one valve keeper came off. The other one is still in there. Don't try to get your finger up in there and wiggle it around. Just hit it a couple more times. Ow. Sometimes they do get stuck and you'll just have to keep You'll just have to keep hitting it until it finally pops out. And there we go. So I'm just gonna fast forward going through the rest of them and then I'll come back to you guys when I'm actually taking the valve stems out. All right, so once all of your springs are off, all you have to do is lift up the head on its side and you're just gonna simply push them out. Pretty simple. Mine are bent, so it's gonna take a little bit more effort to get them out, but there you go. And you could see, I don't know if you guys can see, you might be able to tell that these are bent I'm not sure it's it's pretty hard to tell but they are definitely bent so I'm gonna get all of mine out and then I'll come back to you guys when I'm actually putting the new ones in all right so we're back down here at the head I got my valves all cleaned up they were very full of carbon and whatnot I just cleaned them up a little bit took all the carbon deposits off of them now we're ready to insert them I have here some valve grinding compound we're just going to apply it to the valve spin them with the drill and that should be about it. So let me go ahead and flip this head on its side, insert all the valves, and then we will lap them. We've got all our valves in now. What I need to do is I just need to put a little bit of valve compound on the underneath side of them, and then I'm just gonna spin them with the drill, wipe the compound off, and they should be good to go. So I just basically put a little dap on each valve of the valve lapping compound. Reinserted all the valves, I'm gonna get the drill, and hopefully we can reach the valves. All right, so it looks like my drill itself won't actually reach the valves. So I'm gonna go grab a piece of hose and I will stick it on a bit in the end of the drill and attach it to the valves and that should be good enough to get them spinning. All right, so I just spent a little while looking for something that would fit around my valves. What I ended up coming across was this little piece of sprinkler tubing. My valve stems are just really small. You could also use a piece of fuel hose, but basically what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna insert this onto the valves themselves and I'm just gonna give them a light spin and you can actually hear the compound grinding against the head. And that's basically the sound we wanna hear. And that should be enough. We're just gonna repeat the process throughout the head. And that's just gonna help the valve seal inside the head. So I'm gonna repeat the process for all of my valves and then I'll come back to you guys when I'm done. All right, so now that I'm done with that, I'm just gonna flip the head back over and I'm gonna just wipe off the excess grinding compound from the valves and that should be about it. And then after that, we can actually put the springs back on. All right, so I'm just gonna wipe off the excess from the valves and then I'm just gonna quickly wipe the inside each one just to get off any extra compound. It's okay if there's a little bit left over. It's not gonna harm anything, but we just wanna do a once over real fast, get any extra compound or shavings. 
All right, and that should be about it. Now it's time to go ahead and get the springs back on the heads. And so the last thing we need to do is we need to actually get the springs seated on the valves themselves. This is probably gonna be the hardest part of this whole thing. All right guys, so I'm gonna be 100% real with you guys. A lot of the ways I'm gonna to explain to you guys can be easy. It just depends on how heavy your springs actually are. This is just an example of one of the old springs in this head. And you can see I can barely compress this thing with my bare hands. Even with two hands, I can't really compress this spring. This is probably around a 50, 60 pound spring. I'm not 100% sure on that. These things are very hard to compress. Now, there's a couple different methods on how to do it. Like I showed you guys, there is this Lyle tool. And basically the concept behind the Lyle tool is you're just going to line it up on the thing itself, push down and compress, and you're gonna push down with all your might. And usually that's enough to get those keepers to lock in. If you don't have the Lyle tool, you can try something like this. This is just a breaker bar with a large socket on it. I shoved some foam up inside the socket. And then what you can actually do is you can actually duct tape over this socket piece right here. And then you could push down on the spring like that, put all your weight onto it, and hopefully those retainers will actually lock into place on the valves. Another thing you wanna make sure of is that you get wads of rags like this and put them up underneath the head on the table right where the valve sits so that way the valve actually sucks up into the head and you can't actually compress the valve down onto the table. And they do make C-clamp style compressors that you can try out. Unfortunately, none of the auto parts stores carry those things. The overhead valve style will not work for you. There's just not enough room if you're working on a head like this. If you have a V8 or something, usually those things will work. And the, your kind of last resort, which happened to be mine, is actually making a tool yourself. This thing just kind of sits on these bolt holes like this and I'm able to actually compress the valves down like so. But that'll compress the spring enough to where I can actually put the retainers on with my fingers and a little magnet and then slowly pull the spring back up and it seems to work just about fine. I was able to finally finish this head so I can get to putting the cam on and all that. But basically guys, the moral of the story is you don't need special tools. You can make special tools, but having those tools makes life a lot easier. However, in some cases, even this Lyle tool that I paid $50 for, it got one or two of these ones on. I think really by luck, I was putting a lot of weight onto this head, just putting myself in a precarious situation where I didn't really wanna do that anymore. So I ended up fabbing up my own kind of tool. So yeah, that's about all I have for you guys at the moment. I know this isn't a very in detail video. I hope it just kind of helps spark some ideas for you guys. Every head you work on is gonna be a little bit different. A lot of the import heads, like Mazdas, Toyotas, Hondas, and Nissans, they have a lot lighter springs, maybe 30, 40 pound springs in them. And usually those ones you can use the socket and the breaker bar kind of trick. You usually have enough body weight to actually compress those springs enough to where you can get the keepers on. Some of them I've even seen people use just their two thumbs and push down really hard on the springs themselves and are able to get the retainers to go on. You know, it really just depends on your spring weight. But like I said, hopefully this video can give you guys maybe an idea or two. Definitely taking off the valves is a lot easier than putting them back on. If you guys do like this video, go ahead and hit that subscribe button for me. It helps me out more than you know. And if you can, leave a like on the video. That helps other people be able to see the video as well. And if you guys have any questions, hit me up on Instagram, at Giovanni Dante. You can also follow my Facebook page, facebook.com slash Giovanni Dante Griego. Hit up my website, GiovanniDanteGriego.com. I hope you guys have a wonderful day, and I will see you in the next one. Thank <laughs> you.